Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have in a BMW 1 Series, it's a 116D, and the customer's complaining of a squeaky belt. So as you can see from this clip here, the belt is very squeaky, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the belt and the tensioner today, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So if you have a squeaky belt on your 116D or any one series with the same setup, then what we need to do is find the belt behind this little uh, cover here. So what we're gonna do is take this air box out of the way. So first thing is we're gonna unplug the airflow meter and we're gonna pull up the air box, all three corners like this. And then there's a Jubilee clip that holds the air pipe on here. Just undo that, I've undone that already. And there's another one just below it, undo that and the whole thing pops out in one. So now we have a big access gap here to take this cover off. So all you need is a little trim tool and you pop these little clips off. They're just push clips here. I've already undone them and you can slide this cover out of the way. There's just three clips. Just be careful not to break anything. So you pull that off and set that to one side. So now we have access here to our auxiliary belt. As you can see, we've got our auxiliary belt here that runs around and our tensioner is actually this one here. It comes as a whole complete tensioner that bolts onto the alternator. It's quite a weird design, but I will show you now how to take it off. So the new tensioner looks like this. As you can see, it's bolted on in three locations with three 13 mil bolts over the alternator. So what we need to do is we'll get our little socket on there, which is a 16 mil. So if you just get a 16 mil socket on there and then you can move it up and take the belt off, and release the tension back off. Just like that. So now we can get the belt out of the way. Now the belt's out of the way, we need to get our 13 mils and we're gonna try and undo these. One of them's quite tricky. It's behind the little throttle body here. But for the most part, they're readily accessible. So there's bolt number one. There's bolt number two. I'm just using a quarter drive with a long extension and a 13 mil. But for this top one up here, we're gonna need a spanner. I have just switched over to a flexi head 13 mil just to make it a little bit easier because it's in quite a tight little gap. And hopefully, once it's finger tight, we'll be able to just get the rest out with our fingers. So now that's the third bolt out. Hopefully this will come past here. Just like that, and that's the tensioner there. Bearing feels a little rough. So we're gonna replace this and we're gonna put a new belt on it and hopefully cure a squeaky noise. Just before we fit the new one. We're gonna clean off any uh, dust and debris out of the way so we don't want any contamination on the new parts. Okay, now she's free from all dust and debris. We can take our new tensioner here, which comes pre-tensioned, so it's got a pin in here. So what we'll do is we'll fit it all up and then we put the belt on. And then when we take the tension off, we can pull the pin out and then it will tension itself up nicely.
once we get it in position, I'm putting one of the easier bolts first. Just to get it all lined up. We get them started by hand. And then we'll put in the lower one. Then that way the top one, which is fiddly to get to, should be lined up ready to accept the bolt. Now all three bolts are in. Top one's just a little bit tricky, but just take your time with it. You can get it in and just do it up as much as you can with your fingers and then tighten it down with the spanner. And the other two will tighten up with the ratchet and the socket because they're more easily accessible. That's the top bolt nice and tight. So second bolt nice and tight. And the third bolt nice and tight. So now we can get our brand new belt. And we can feed it on the exact same way that it come off. If you're unsure, Take a picture before you take it off in case you can't remember how it goes. This one slots in just like that. And because the tension is already pre-tensioned, the belt will just slot in nice and easy. Make sure it's in all the ribs inside all of the pulleys so it's all parallel and nice. And then what we're gonna do, take the tension off the belt, pull the little pin out, and then the belt will be tensioned exactly how it needs to be. And you can always keep that little pin in case you ever have to take it off again. You can slot the pin back in the same hole and get it tensioned up. So now you've got your new tensioner and your new belt fitted so now what we're going to do is just put all the covers back on and we'll start it up and hopefully the noise will be cured so again with our little covers here we are just going to make sure we've got it the right way up first and we're just going to pop that in like that and you see these little holes line up Got a little push fit securing fixings here. They just go in the hole and then you push it in and that secures it in nice and tight. So you've got one on the left here, one up the top, and then you've got one right down the bottom. Now they're in position and secured, we can get our air box. And we're gonna reconnect our hose at the bottom. And just before that, we can do up the Jubilee clip because it is a little bit fiddly to get to. So do up your Jubilee clip before you put the rest of the air box back in. That way you don't forget. That's your first one on and done up. Then we can get the hose. We'll go back over the air box here. Whilst just lining it up with the three points. And with the air box back in position like that and our hose on. Do up the second Jubilee clip. And 
And then finally, you get your airflow meter sensor, plug it in, push the little tab down, the securing tab, make sure everything's in place. And with these little bits here, you can just push it down and then flip the rubber over, just like that, so it sits in position. We'll do the same on this one. You can pull these rubbers off and fit them into the airbox first and then pop them over, but it's just as easy to do that. Now everything's nice and secure. So now we're going to start it up and see if the squeak is gone. So there you have it guys, with a few simple tools and a couple of new parts, you can fix your car at home, or if you go to a local garage and they can fix it for you, it's not that expensive. It doesn't take that long to do. So that's this one fixed. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, it really does help out the channel. We're trying to grow and there's gonna be lots more content coming your way. See you later guys.